Welcome back, care partners. I hope you're having a great day. I know that caring for somebody with memory loss is one of the hardest things probably you've ever had to to endure, um, decide to do, uh, get through and embrace it. And it's hard, but I have a lot of faith in you. I know it was hard for me. I believe for me, being a seasoned nurse and I was doing that in my career, but when my mom came down with this, it was even harder. So I just want you to know we get it. We get it and how hard it is caring for your own family member. Really tough. We try so hard here at a, a better approach to memory care to bring you great information, great speakers. Um, and today we have not let you down. We have an amazing person who is from Kentucky, Adria Thompson. Let me tell you about Adria. So Adria is a seasoned speech language pathologist specializing in dementia care. She has a master's degree in communication disorders from Eastern Kentucky University. With over 10 years of experience in various care settings, including skilled nursing facilities, assisted living, memory care communities, Adria brings a wealth of knowledge and practical experience and strategies to those who need, need her. She's a founder of Be Like Care Consulting where she simplifies complex dementia care concepts for over 320,000 caregivers through her engaging online platforms. And I'm a huge fan, I want you to know. Adria is dedicated to enhancing caregiver skills and improving the lives of individuals with dementia through accessible education and training. Please welcome to our podcast, Adria Thompson. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. It's my pleasure. And um, I've been watching you for a while now and thinking, oh, I've got to get that girl on the podcast. She has so much to offer. It's been a long time coming. I, I yeah. feel the same way. And you're so young. So, you know, and that's impressive. I'm impressed by that. So wonderful. So you live in Kentucky. I do. I actually live in Northern Kentucky, not too far from Cincinnati. With your husband. Yes. Yes. Fine. All right, good. Yeah, and I'm up in Cincinnati, so we're really kind of neighbors. Yeah, yeah, not too far. And that's fun, but I've just been so impressed with you on social media and have watched the way you've just grown. And so I think you will be a huge asset to our audience um, and so that they can get more information from you and they'll understand this. Well, let me go to a question here. I want to get started. We don't have much time. And so let's see what I have here. First question, what sparked your idea to start Be Like Care uh, Consulting? And how does being a speech language pathologist shape how you help people with dementia? Yeah. So I was a speech language pathologist working in long-term care communities like you read in my bio memory care communities, assisted living, nursing homes. And I really just grew a heart for working with individuals with dementia. And it was well into the process of me kind of specializing in that area that my own grandmother was diagnosed. And so I started seeing from the professional and the personal side, how little resources there were for caregivers and how little, not only the like staff of some of these communities understood dementia, but families had no idea what they were dealing with or what they were seeing. And um, I gained a lot of experience, of course, over, over you know, 10 years of working in these communities. And so um, I really just was training care staff mostly. So other physical, occupational and speech therapists, um, nurses, aides on the floor. And I loved doing that. Like I, I loved bringing a different perspective for them and making them like more effective in providing care. And so that's was that was my background, my experience. And in 2021, my husband and I moved from Kentucky to Washington State. So I had to quit my job and I wanted to continue doing training in the role that I was at doing in Kentucky in Washington, but I knew no one. I had no connections. No one knew who I was. And so I was working PRN or as needed as a speech therapist in some communities in Washington. And whenever I would go to the executive directors and say, can I do some dementia training for your staff? They're like, but aren't you a speech therapist? Like we have nurses for that. We have social workers for that. And I, it was frustrating to me that people didn't quite understand the role of a speech therapist and how we do provide people uh, with dementia, a very unique uh, skill set. And so 
purely as a means to an end. I started, I created this business and started creating videos. But um, being a speech therapist is extremely important. I mean, it's integral to everything that I do. I am an expert in communication, cognition, and swallowing, which are all things individuals with dementia experience trouble with. And honestly, it's, communication is the foundation of all interactions we have with people with dementia. And so having my background you know, experience education in that area has been extremely beneficial. Absolutely. And, and you're so right that there really is, we're really limited on the great information that's out there. There's poor information that's out there. There's mm -hmm. videos of people showing their mom making all kinds of mistakes. And I'm just going, Oh no, yeah. please. No, 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 no. Be respectful. Yeah. Don't do that. We need Adria showing yeah. people how to do this. So that's always so impressed. We need this information. And you know what? And our parents, our loved ones, they deserve this information. And that's what got me even more excited to see what you were doing. But I know other speech therapists, maybe not as highly qualified with education as you are, but they help so much with individuals that have you know, memory challenges and speech challenges, secondary to brain challenges. So we definitely need you out there. Well, how did you decide to start making videos right on yeah. this social media platform and you know was the goal to become an influencer like this because you <laughs> certainly are yeah i think the influencer word is so weird and before i started this business i didn't even have like a personal instagram or tiktok <laughs> so i that was not like my dream <laughs> you know but i started creating videos because when i was in washington i found myself like just having to not only defend the fact that people with dementia deserve really good care, but defend to the fact that I'm someone who knows something that could train about it. And so I was, I just had this idea like a couple years prior, but I, I put it into effect where I was like, you know, if I just take all these things I've learned in clinical practice and working one-on-one -on -one with individuals with dementia, I just started making these little videos. Um, and the next obvious step was to put them on social media so that people could access them. But I imagined going into a care community and saying, look, you can pull up this website. This is a, a example of my style, my training techniques. This is like how I teach people. And it's in a very succinct way because the videos on social media are like less than 90 seconds a lot of times. So it was purely a means to an end to prove my expertise. I thought that that's all it was going to be, but within just a few weeks, I mean months really, I was getting thousands of followers and then tens of thousands of followers. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like this is where the education is needed. And so I really, my intention at the beginning was to care, to provide training and care communities. And it kind of switched once all this attention from social media started happening to kind of just the direct to consumer, like straight to the caregivers who need them, whether that's caregivers at home taking care of like a family member or professional caregivers who watch my TikToks after work, you know? So mm -hmm. yeah, the videos were, were just an idea to prove my expertise and it just blew up from there. It has really blown up and congratulations because you. your following is not just tens, you know, it's hundreds of that, 300 thousand mm -hmm. plus is what, what you've got following you. And it's really, really great. And I think that probably you're, you're hitting, um, I don't know if it's mostly younger, older, mid-age, you know, it's, it's interesting who is on social media. Um, yeah. but whoever it is, you're helping them, you know, and in my situation, I find that a lot of the kids who might want to take care of their parents, they don't live near their parents. Mm -hmm. They're far yeah. away. But so you're, you're just, I don't know. I think it's hugely successful. Um, but how do you make sure your posts align with uh, the needs of the professional and personal caregivers? Yeah. Yeah. I, I listen a lot. You know, I get messages daily. Um, at times I get like 40 messages a day through social media of people explaining their situation. And obviously I cannot respond to them all. I wish I could. Um, but I get a lot of feedback and that is I mean, social media is just a continuous feedback loop. You post a video, people react immediately in the comments. I get personal messages. 
And so it's, I just follow what people are needing. And sometimes I stumble across it. Like sometimes I have an idea that's not necessarily something that someone has asked. I throw it out there and it doesn't get much engagement. People don't really care. And I just think, okay, well, like that's not an, a big issue right now. Like, and so I kind of pull away from that subject and then I might try something else and then it goes off really well. And a ton of people are asking follow-up questions. And so it's really easy, quite on to be quite honest, to kind of figure out what people need. And so I have, you know, social media as a platform for that. Um, but then my personal situation with my grandmother, you know, that inspires me a lot. And then I do consultations one-on-one -on -one with people and I hear a lot of, you know, detailed stories about what people are going through. Yeah. And you also, you offer consultations for just families privately too. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. Tell, tell me about that part of your business. Yeah. So I do one-on-one -on -one with uh, over Zoom with people from really all over the world. It's been fun connecting with people like in Dubai and Switzerland. And, um, and they basically, I'm just speaking with a caregiver and they explain to me what is hard in caring for the person with dementia in their life. And I provide them the education and training about um, a lot of times, you know, it's just like explaining more about what dementia is, the expected symptoms that come along with it. And just putting words to what they're seeing is so relieving. You know, I, I wish I could say that, you know, a lot of magic happens during these consultations and I solve all of their problems, but really it's a perspective shift of just like what you're talking about is normal. Like, in the context of this abnormal brain disease, it is normal, you know, and like other people experience it too. And here's what has worked for them. And we kind of problem solve through that. And, you know, whether it's those kind of care tips, generalized education, or also connecting them with products or services that can be beneficial to them. Uh, it's, it's really a, a big part of my job. It's a lot of fun. I love connecting with people like that. Right. And each situation is a little bit different. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, does the person have awareness of their disease? Do they not have awareness of their disease? Huge things like that. Um, but you're right. Changing perspective. I think the hardest thing is, you know, when you become a parent, these are little bitty people and they, they sleep a lot. They eat, you change diapers, but you know, you get to grow with them. But then all of a sudden your mom is kicking you out of the blankety blank house in my situation. And you're like, oh my goodness. And here I had been a nurse 30 years at that point. Mm -hmm. And I thought I understood it. I was so blind. And so it's interesting. I'll start to teach in a class and someone said, yeah, yeah, yeah. We know all about that. My, my grandma had that. And I'm thinking, Okay, we'll see, you know, because yeah. there, there's how many different diagnoses that give us symptoms of dementia, and then everybody could have a mixed picture, and, you know, what is their culture, what what is their relationship already with their family, and can mm -hmm. that be reconciled to the point where you can be effective with them? So everything changes, and these mm -hmm. people are frightened, and sometimes I've dealt with families who, you know what, the mom threw them out of the house, and fine, I don't, I'm, I'm done with her then, and I just have to say, oh, hold on, guess mm -hmm. what, she needs you right now more than she's ever needed you, and let me tell you how and why, so that, that can be, that can be really tough, I love, I love what you're doing, um, you. and so collaboration seems crucial in your work. Could you talk to me more about um, some of the partnerships you've formed with companies, brands, and organizations? Yeah, I think that's one of uh, the things that people see on my page when you go to social media. And, you know, typically when you are on an influencer's page, I use that word, you know, loosely when it applies to me, I feel like. But you see these like sponsored posts are these like commercials that kind of comes across and you're like, ah, swipe through, like whatever, which is so interesting because on my page, I have connected with so many awesome companies, like innovative products and services, whether they be for profit or nonprofit. So many amazing people out there doing incredible things for the dementia community. And so many people don't know about it. And so I will make these videos kind of like promoting, like, here's this product that can solve this problem that you're experiencing, or here's this organization that's providing support that you desperately need and you don't even know it. And like my followers eat it up. It's not like a oh, commercial, like it's actually things that 
are really important. And that is so important to me to be able to build partnerships with companies that are doing good things because there are so many times, uh, you know, on the back side of things, there are so many times companies reach out to me like, hey, we have this product or service and it's going to solve every issue in dementia. And then I dive into it a little bit more. They send it to me and I'm just like, you're missing the mark. You know, unfortunately, there are some people out there who look at dementia knowing that it is, you know, the numbers are doubling, tripling, whatever. We know that, you know, the baby boomers are going to have dementia, you know, and and we are looking forward in the not too far future of a lot of people needing care and support. And I think a lot of times people see that as like a money grab, like a really good business opportunity without having the heart behind it or even without having the skills to understand it. And so some of the things that kind of are out there may not be a good fit, may not be effective, um, in my opinion, or of evidence-based, which is, you know, really important. And so there's a lot of times where I, I turn businesses, companies down that, that I don't think have people's with dementias, like their interests in mind. And so it's, it's a, that's a full-time job in and of itself is, is mm-hmm. connecting with people like that. But when we, like when I find those people and those companies that are just doing those things that are so incredible, it is an honor to like, to, to amplify what they're doing and to be able to connect people with the things that they need, because sometimes it can make a huge difference. Like it can make the difference between mom going to a nursing home or being able to stay home, you know, if they have the right thing in place. hundred percent. I love that. And, um, yeah, the fact that you have great discernment about what works, what doesn't work, and then you can probably inspire those companies that are missing the mark. If they'll listen, not everybody's going to listen to us, Yeah, but we can try. We just keep putting it out there because there are folks that are so hungry and desperate for this information. I do agree that I feel like we're, we're getting a tidal wave started of better information and better care. And there are great organizations coming about to support um, and respect the individual that has brain change. I mean, they didn't ask for it, you know, and you and I both, if it, if it's us someday, we certainly hope that these, these places, these organizations, these ideas will be in place, you know, to help us. And I see you being a huge part of that. And that's so cool that companies are coming to you Mm -hmm. Adria and wanting advice, wanting you to promote their stuff. How cool. And that you are able to discern what's worthwhile and what needs more work before we throw it out there. Cause there are, I mean, I've seen, I've seen, um, memory care, uh, communities who, because they have rooms with locked doors, you know, and they can feed them, they call themselves memory care. And I want to think, oh, guys, there's so much more to that. And, um, but some organizations get it and some don't. That's just kind of frustrating. How, how do your collaborations help push your mission of enhancing dementia care forward? Yeah, I think we can't all do it alone. Um, It takes a community. And there's one thing that I have, a couple of months, I feel like into my business, I had to really sit down and like set boundaries for myself. Once I started getting all of this attention on social media is I just felt this pressure to be the expert in every area in dementia care. And it's like, you know, people are asking me about legal issues and financial issues and, you know, like medications and, and self care. And like, how do I deal with these feelings of grief and of stress and of shame And I would just in over my head with questions from people, my expertise, I had, I had to define that. So my expertise is in communication and it is in daily care tips. So generalized dementia education, communication, and those like, how do we take a shower? How do you get them to drink more water? How do you get them to change their shirt? Like those things, because they're founded in, found in, in communication. And so that's where I had to kind of like draw some lines around myself and then say, okay, if you're looking for mental health support, I'm not the girl for you. If you're looking for financial legal planning for the future, I'm not the girl for you. I 
I build strong relationships with people who have expertise in those areas and I can refer. And I think that that's so important in this community for us to understand our strengths and understand our weaknesses even more so and be able to lean on each other when those kind of things come up. Because you really get yourself in trouble if you start going down a path of answering questions that you have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. And I certainly never want to be that. So, um, so I, yeah, I think it's incredibly important for anyone in the space to to collaborate and to because the ultimate goal more than supporting caregivers which is a big goal is m- improving the quality of life and care for individuals with dementia yeah on a personal and, level individually yeah. yeah very customized way and so we need to like focus on the person with dementia the next step is usually a caregiver and then from there we got to we got to create a team and that's that's going to be what's best in in the long run. Yeah, I like that a lot. I have found the same thing in my business. You know, I was a seasoned nurse. I used to, I helped start a private duty company. So then some people think, oh, so you know all about, and you know the best places to go. And well, I used to, but mm-hmm. now I have to defer also. You know, there are companies that only do placement type stuff if that's where you are. And I agree hundred percent, or I have elder law attorneys in different parts of town that are equipped to do these things. Boy, you're spot on. You're so wise. You're very <laughs> wise. And you came upon that really quickly. That is so good because initially it can just think like, wow, I'm getting all this attention, but it's mm-hmm. like, wow, I'm so far. Yeah. Spread out and here. It's that it's- you know, it is certainly tempting to be like, I am the end all be all like, come to me for everything because that would drive business and ultimately money, but that's not going to serve anyone if I'm not, I'm not. And I think, you know, being a medical professional, like I have a medical license, I have a scope of practice, like that has just been ingrained in me, like from, you know, college and grad school is that, that that's, that's important. And uh, yeah, it's, I learned it very quickly that I was like, I'm going to be in over my head if I don't just, it's, I think people respect when you say, hey, thanks for asking. Great question. I'm not the person to ask, though. Let me refer you. No one's going to look at you and think like, oh, gosh, she's so dumb. <laughs> no, not at all. I think I think like I, I just respect you for that. And I think people will. They'll just respect you for having that discernment. I think it's I like I said, I think it's wisdom and that you've learned that at a very young age. So way to go. Mm-hmm. So looking ahead. What are some new initiatives um, or developments? What can we expect coming out of Be Light Care Consulting? Yeah, gosh. I mean, my business has been operating for, you know, coming up on three years now and feels like I've been doing this forever, but at the same time, it's gone by so fast, but growing so much. And so some of the things I'm really excited about are uh, I'll be going to Europe in September and uh, a little bit of August mostly in September. And yep. I um, want to encourage a round of applause right now. Round of applause. She is going to Europe. So cool. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. So got some really cool things in store. We're, I'm going to be doing the walking the talk for dementia, which is um, hiking portions of the Camino de Santiago with a group of people from all over the world who either have dementia, they work with individuals with dementia, they're caregivers, researchers, medical professionals. And it's just kind of to like get everybody all in one place and talk about some of the big issues in this space. And then I'll be going to Amsterdam for a while. We're going to be touring the Dementia Village in the Netherlands, which I'm so excited to to explore and learn more about. Um, And then going to Silver Eco, which is a conference in France where I am a nominee for an international award uh, for my business. And so that's just going to be really fun. Like I am so excited, um, overwhelmed with the idea of packing for that long, but you know, all good things. And then the other big thing that's kind of in the works is I'm having an app developed. So one of the big things I hear is, you know, like my, I want to share my, these videos with my mom, but she doesn't have social media or people who message me and they say, Hey, could you do a video about brushing teeth? And I'm like, I've done 25 videos about brushing teeth. It was just two years ago. Uh, And social media is just not the best platform to like search for what you're looking for. So true. So true. So on, on the app, all my videos will be searchable and you can access anyone with a smart device can access them. Uh, So that is in the works, a lot of hard work, but it'll be exciting. I'm really excited about that. 
Right. And you've only been doing this a few years, but there's really a need out there and you are serving so many and it's so exciting. I'm just excited to call you a colleague and now you've been a guest on my podcast. So that's super cool. Well, I really want you to go into how do folks get a hold of you that need your help? Tell us more. Tell us how we can get a hold of, of Atria when we need yeah. your help. Yeah. If, if you have questions, um, a lot of the questions you might have about myself, about my services, I have some courses also like um, a course all about how to shower someone with dementia and then a dementia 101 course. A lot of information you can find on my website. So it's belightcare.com. You can also email me if you have a specific question, if you're a company or if you're a caregiver and you want to know maybe what service might be best for you, you can email me at info at belightcare.com. And then of course you can find me on any social media. So that's Instagram, TikTok, Facebook at Be Light Care. And um, yeah, I'm I'm accessible. I'm everywhere. My face <laughs> uh, pops up a lot. People are always like, I feel like I know you. And yes. sometimes at conferences, <laughs> people will like hug me. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, we, we got a lot going on, but I, I you can find me a lot of places uh, and access me. So I, I appreciate this platform so much. Opportunity to talk about my business and myself and I'm just glad to meet a neighbor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we are neighbors. And what brought you back to Kentucky? So um, my job change again. My <laughs> husband worked for the for Forest Service. And so he just like takes jobs different places. We have been married. We'll be coming up on 10 years in December. And we've moved, I think, 11 times. Oh, so dear. we just move a lot. We rent short term uh, furnished places all the time. We just kind of you know, all over the board and we love it that way. So, <laughs> well, that's good. Then you're wired for that. That is good. That yeah. is awesome. Well, I just want to, again, thank you for being here. Thanks for sharing all this great information. I think you're a huge asset to this platform and what I do and what my goals are. I think we line up really well. And I knew that you would be a, just a wonderful person to get on here and share more information and more tools for more people out there struggling. Thanks everybody for being here today. As always, I hope that you will like and share and subscribe. There's some really great information about Adria Thompson that lots of people need to know. Please share that and go to her sites and, you know, log on there and subscribe because she has a wealth of information and wisdom to share with you. And her videos are short and they're really pointed and I like them. They're good. They're easy to understand. Um, they're great for the average show and, and I appreciate that. Thanks again for just being here today. I'm Teresa Youngstrom, and I hope that you'll always keep in mind that we support you, we're here for you, and that I believe you got this. <laughs>